dystopian future. The story feels as haunting today as when the book was published in 1962 and when Stanley Kubrick's film caused a stir in 1971. We are welcoming two of the actors, Donovan Whitney, who plays Alex, and Haley Janita. Did we do that? I do it right? Yes, you did. We were practicing. <laughs> We've been having fun already, but I got to say, when you hear a clockwork orange, so many people, you do go back to that time. Right. And mm -hmm. you, it's still kind of relevant. Both of you shaking your he heads there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, you know, in today's society, there's a lot of violence that goes on, right? right. Um, and from multiple um, entities, right? right? From like the private sector, um, the state. Um, and so I think that this play really touches on those things. Right. And it's just interesting that still something, like I said, just even reading those years, 62 and 71, that's I think when you say a clockwork orange, you especially go to that film of Stanley Kubrick's. Mm -hmm. The fact that these plays of that time still are resonating. Talk about playing these roles that you know you're going to get an impact from the audience when they are there witnessing what you are performing on stage. Right. Yeah, so I feel like a lot of our characters except for Alex, of mm. course, who does play the main character and all the rest of the ensemble does play a variety of different characters and they're more so like stereotypes of society, right? Like our minister um, is an example of like the state and then the mm. chaplain is the example of the church, right? It's mm -hmm. not necessarily like an actual person, but more so this is what society looks at these people as, right? So mm. ours is a bit different from the movie. We are a lot more like the book. Yeah, and, and in terms of playing the character Alex um, DeLarge, if, if we want to go there, because <laughs> uh, that's his technical name, uh, and it's it's so interesting playing this character because um, I saw the movie, and it's very different from the movie. Okay. Um, it's uh, just in terms of some of the things that we cover, don't cover, mm -hmm. um, but in essence, the the thought of playing somebody that is this terrible kind of sadistic person. Like, why do they do the things that they do? Mm -hmm. And then when it comes time for um, the, uh, when it comes time for the treatment, I will say, because that's kind of like well known in the story, um, it's, it's an opportunity to look at um, kind of dissecting the, where the violence comes from um, and does this person really, uh, do they really need to um, quell that side of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you and I, we were all talking about getting back to the stage. And of course, you mm -hmm. know, we're back here in the studio. Yeah. I, this is the first time, what, job sites, first time back in the Schimberg Playhouse since March of 2020. You are getting g wonderful reviews, yeah. too, from the play, but then being able to be back. I mean, you came to, from Indiana yes. because of the stage world here. And, and just talk about what that's like to fully be back and have audiences stepping in, knowing this is already getting rave reviews. It's so refreshing yeah. um, to have that energy and just to kind of have them along with this ride with us um, it's one thing to play to an empty house like during rehearsal mm -hmm. and at times during the pandemic that we're you know still in you know I'm curious Haley when you do again there's so many wonderful productions that do come out of the Bay Area mm -hmm. when you're an actor though and you go ahead and you see something that you get to really dive your teeth into and you know you're gonna make the audience feel something is that something more that, that you go for and you felt that way especially when you saw the script of a clockwork orange yes because you know we do touch on so many important aspects of why it's so important in society now right like what we talked about and what our director Dan Granke mm -hmm. um, again kind of what you said like who's allowed to be violent when is that yeah. okay when is it not okay we're really raising questions to people like you know take a step back and think about what's going on right now why is this okay is this okay you know um, one element that I think makes it a little bit like obviously it's not lighthearted but gives a little bit lightheartedness we <laughs> yeah. do have a lot of dark comedy in it which people do not expect I okay. think yeah yeah there are some like really a funny bit bits mm -hmm. yeah a bit. hey real fast too we want to share the information of course where people can yes. go for tickets well, as we do that stress center any new COVID precautions or are we still talking about the same that we've seen for the past few months? Do you guys know? Well, actually, um, so the Stras released something recently to where they are um, easing their mask mandates. Okay. So if you're fully vaccinated, um, it's optional to wear a mask. We do for our show because it's in a black box theater. It's the proximity is really close. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first two roles, uh, we ask that um, people wear K95 uh, masks. Good stuff. Safety. Have to ask these questions now. I know. Right? Yeah. It's good to know for Part people. Part of the deal. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we hope you stay right there. More morning blend on the other side of the break.